Cornelius and Peter is so important to our faith as Gentiles. So I want you to hear this story in the backdrop of Cornelius's house being somewhere right out there. We'll stay out of the way of the trucks. And as soon as he does, I'm going to have Pastor Billy read this scripture from the 10th chapter of the book of Acts. And this is, Peter has now come up from Jaffa to be with Cornelius. Uh, Cornelius sent for him. So let's start reading right here at verse 30 and go through the end of the chapter. Yeah, 48. Listen up. <clears throat> Cornelius said, four days ago to this hour, I was praying in my house during the ninth hour. And behold, a man stood before me in shining garments. And he said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard and your alms have been remembered before God. Therefore, send to Joppa and invite Simon, who was also called Peter, to come to you. He's staying at the house of Simon the Tanner by the sea. So I sent for you immediately and you have been kind enough to come. Now then, we are all here present before God to hear all that you have been commanded by the Lord. So opening his mouth, Peter said, I most certainly understand now that God is not one to show partiality, but in every nation, the man who fears him and does what is right is welcome to him. The word which he sent to the sons of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know the thing which took place throughout all Judea, starting from Galilee after the baptism which John proclaimed. You know of Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit, with power, and how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all the things he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They also put him to death by hanging him on a cross. God raised him up on the third day and granted that he become visible, not to all the people, but to witnesses who were chosen beforehand by God, that, that is, to us who ate and drank with him after he arose from the dead. And he ordered us to preach to the people and solemnly to testify that this one who has been appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. Of him all the prophets bear witness that through his name everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who were listening to the message. All the circumcised believers who came with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they were hearing them speaking with tongues and exalting God. Then Peter answered, Surely no one can refuse the water for these to be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we did, can he? And he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to stay on for a few days. The word of the Lord. Do you realize why this is so powerful? This is the first time that Gentiles had received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Cornelius was a Gentile, but he believed in the God of the Jews. And so he was righteous, he was offering alms, and God heard his prayer. And by receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit, which was manifest as the gift of tongues in that time, it was so important because you and I, we're Gentiles. I mean, this was how the faith was opened to the world. The Apostle Paul becomes known as the Apostle to the Gentiles. I mean, in, in Peter here though, uh, he, this would have been unbelievable to him. Being Jews, they would only believe that, that that their Christian faith, this Messiah, was for them. But no, this tells us that he came for the whole world. And so we're right here where Cornelius had a vision to go. He heard from an angel, go and get Peter. Because the angel told him Peter was not far away at Jaffa. And so Peter came. What an amazing time. So uh, I just want you to be encouraged by that. You're right here where the faith first spread to the Gentile world, which is why we are able to have faith today.